some aims are emerging now, those who are willing or wanting to be Nigeria's president. One of them is Mr. Chukuka Monye, who says his plan is to make Nigerians' lives better. He's also saying that the future is now. I'm being joined by Mr. Chukuka Monye, who recently declared his intention for the number one office in the land. He did that a few days ago. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> is Mr. Monye as young as he looks? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to become president? Okay, so um, I would like to, I would like an opportunity um, to improve lives, to make lives better. But more importantly is to restore the dignity of Nigerians, of the average Nigerian. And um, you probably wonder why I'm saying that. You know, I think where we are now as a country, uh, things like the poverty rate, for instance, uh, makes one wonder, you know, if we've put priority um, with regards to the dignity of the average human being, okay? Now, is it something that can be addressed? I believe so. But I just feel that it has just not been a priority. That's one. Now, in some instances, I also feel that even when there has been attempt or interest to address this issue, we haven't had capacity so I've looked at my capacities, my capabilities, skill sets, my experiences, and I'm saying to myself that Nigeria is not in a good place. And it's possible for us to actually transform things. So the question is, what are these skill sets? Because the office of the number one citizen Correct. Of, the, of the president mm -hmm. is not a joke. It's, it's a very serious one. And a lot of people on the outside think they know until when they get in there. Mm -hmm. What, is, what are these skill sets that you think you possess that? Very good question. Now, I get asked often, okay, what are your political skills, for instance? Um, and one of the reasons why I find that question particularly misleading is because people have somehow defined political skill to mean something. Um, that may not necessarily translate to the skill sets required to run, manage, you know, a country. Now, what are these skill sets? People skills, stakeholder management, strategic thinking, problem solving, international relations, and many more. Now, you've, you've it, used all of this in your own private. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you've, you've, you have your own business. Yes. I guess it's successful. Successful. And you think it's successful enough for you to be able to handle the business of, uh, of the of, country. Of, of the country. You know, I mean, so do, it, do there's, you a thinking, there's a thinking that is politics. required. Is this, your, this is your first time of uh, your foray into politics, isn't it? Um, I won't say first time. I'll probably say first time in, as an attempt into governance on the country's level. But not politics. Politics is a, it's a way of life, you know. Um, you know, from university days, uh, you know, I became first black president in a foreign university. Um, and in the cause of running any corporate entity, there's no way. Once you have human beings and different kinds of human beings, politics exists, right? Um, so there are different things. And let me even add that in the cause of my work, I've also done a lot with government, closely whether it's the Delta Economic Summit Group and some other, you know, things that I've done. So do I have a full appreciation of what's happening? Definitely. Now, can I bring to the table these other skills that I've, you know, that I've acquired from the private sector? Absolutely. Can I then summarize that I have some sort of wholesome set of skill sets that are required? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm saying all of this because a lot of times... Um, you know, certain people like to almost stigmatize people coming from the corporate sector, when in reality, they have tangible experiences. You can see tangible things that they have done. You know, um, there are people that will quickly say, oh, why didn't you become a counselor first? And the first question I ask them is, okay, 
What is the skill set that I'm acquiring as a counselor? When do I need it? How do I need it? How do I utilize it? And then they pause. And I say, hey, there you go. Now we're talking, you need transformation in the country. You need restoration. Everyone is using different languages. What are the skill sets that will help you to restore, that will help you to transform? Is it the politics as you know it, or is it someone who has change management skills, who has transformation skills, who has interna international relations skills? So we need to move from where we have sort of defined politics to mean uh, th you know, things that even make it less relevant you know, for running the country and begin to unpack it and identify the specific skills that are required to run, a, you know, in this country. Right. So I'd like to ask you some very quick questions sure. because of our time. The first one, what do you suppose is Nigeria's perhaps biggest challenge? Mm. Biggest challenge? Um, I'll beg you to make it three, not one. <laughs> because the reason is, um, some will say uh, this is the reason why we have not moved forward. If we solve this, all of the problems are going to be f solved. So, if mm, there is well, I'll say, I'll say two. And what are these? I'll say security, and then institution. So I'll say reforming security, infrastructure, and I'll say institutional reforms. Now, if you're able to do those two, things like job creation will be sorted out. You know. Um, a lot of people typically say, especially in politics, oh, we're going to give you X million jobs. These are promises. You don't, you don't create jobs. You enable people to create the jobs. You enable the private sector to create jobs. So if you make it enabling, then guess what? It will happen naturally. Security, I need to feel safe. How do you fix security? It's OK. So I'll say, I'll say a few things about security, of course. It's security, so there are certain things I won't say, but let me talk about three things. Now, what we're facing today can be looked at from one angle, which is interventionist. There are certain tactical things that one can do that I can't really say right now. But there's a second dimension to it. And, and that second dimension, you know, relates to what things like empowerment, you know, things like st strengthening the security, you know, infrastructure. Um, I could tell you that growing up, for what I can remember, there was a time, those Ecomog days and, the, you know, before that, um, there, were, there were times that one was proud of the armed forces and a lot of the things. There, there was something that showed strength, might, you know, uh, that there was that we felt secure somehow. That's as long as I can remember. I think we can get back to those days, you know. Um, if you engage a lot of people in the security space, they'll, they'll let you know that um, things like empowering them is key. But that's the second uh, dimension. Then there's a third angle and conversation that needs to be had. That's around, you know, where do you place certain security components? Federal, state you know, community level. Um, and those are not conversations that I would shy away from when the time comes. But broadly speaking, those are sort of the three different areas that I look at. So let's scary. wrap up now. Okay. And there are other quick questions. I said I was going to ask you some quick questions. Sure. What political party do you belong? Um, I, be I belong to a party that I, I, I don't want to disclose at the moment. <laughs> yes. So because your support, I mean, anyone watching you now feels, I like what this man is saying. I probably will want to vote for him if he gets the ticket of a political party. So, uh, so how would it, because you cannot be a president without having a political platform. Um, that decision will be made very, very soon. Consultations are ongoing. and um, So you're considering the, any of the major political parties? We're considering, you know, some factors at the moment. So consultations are going on. And the, um, I, I, I want you to understand that, you know, when it comes to the, the issue of determining a party, quite a number of factors you have to look at. The youth on, the, on one hand are saying they want a platform of expression, right? 
and then you have certain stakeholders um, that you also need to, to, to consult with. So, you know, that's So, that's would you count I'm yourself doing. as a youth candidate or a youth aspirant? Um, I will count myself as a presidential <laughs> aspirant. Well, you don't belong to the youth or the young bracket. A presidential aspect, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because that conversation will be very important because there are some young people who are coming together already who are saying, we want to identify with those who have interests of the young people at heart. I'm uh, passionate like, about the youth. That's good. what I've done okay. for, for almost 20 years. It's my priority. Ah. But, but when you are aspiring to you know, become president, you're not president for just one segment of the nation. Absolutely. Um, this i like you to answer in 30 seconds, uh, if, you, if you may. And uh, this is perhaps the first time I'm, I'm seeing someone from Delta State. Uh, for those who have come out, they're probably from the southeast, from the southwest, or from some, some part of the north. Um, Delta has not really come into the equation. You have brought Delta State or the south-south into the equation right now. Um, why do you consider that in the conversation around rotation, that where you come from, Delta State, might be uh, something that can be considered? Um, so, again, um, I want you to understand that the hat that I'm wearing is actually not the hat of, you know, prioritizing um, which, you know, sector of the, the, the country that, I'm, that I come from. Um, I'm coming from the angle of, hey, things are not okay. We're trying to restore the dignity of the human being. Um, the youth are saying they want a voice. Um, I'm looking at it quite from a holistic um, perspective and not just Delta. Yes, I'm from Delta, um, from, you know, um, the Igbo extraction. Um, but so that also that's... Comes. Isn't it? You, you might say so. <laughs> you might uh, say people so. will say, what does it matter anyway where you come from? What matters is if you get someone who will get the job done. That's my focus. I'm Thank sure. you so much. That's my that. focus. Chukuka Moye, presidential aspirant, uh, who is not able to tell us what political platform is going to be running. Not just, not yet. just yet. Not just yet. Very soon. <laughs> but I wish you the very best. It's refreshing uh, to see and hear people who before now, have not been in the pop uh, popular political terrain. We are now coming into. Uh, we hope to see more of that. It's Thank a pleasure. You so and I it's wish a you pleasure. Well. Thank you.